Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. We got ours, ourselves a uh, Kohler SV725 over here. Uh, for lack of better terms, it's a little 725cc V-twin engine. Um, overhead valves. It is the Kohler Courage 24 horsepower engine. These things are known for head gasket failure. I've done a few of them. Here lately, the past two I've done, this will be the third, they have been just little external leaks. I've even had a warped head on the last one that we had to uh, uh, resurface. Uh, and that's another thing that you'll find is you'll think your carb might need, be, need to be clean. You think maybe, uh, maybe your pilot jet's acting up because of the surging. And here it's just an air leak. So it's going to be running a little lean. And um, these external ones, you basically can listen for it. It'll kind of have that peep, 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 peep sound to it. Uh, yeah, that's probably the worst sound effect I could do in the world, I know. But yeah, I'm going to show you how I diagnose these. I, I, I do run a leak down test sometimes. But when you got the external leak and you really want to find out, there's an easy way. We'll get in here and show you how I do it. We're going to tear this head off. We're going to go over the whole head. Let's dive into how I diagnose these head gaskets. Um, the, the past three, I think I've done of these, have been these little external leaks to where they're not really going down into the crankcase internally. It's just a little exterior uh, area on the head gasket that it's prone to leak on these single cylinders and dual cylinder uh, engines on these Kohlers. But let's dive in, guys. Here's the look at the make and model number just to show you guys what exact engine we are working on here today. Here is what we're going to use to diagnose our head gasket. All right, here's the head gasket I ordered. Right, here's the part number. there i just wanted to show you guys real quick so so we have a head gasket leak right uh right on the side here okay so if it were to be failing right here which they do guys it will be taking the combustion chamber um and the combustion chamber will be leaking into the crankcase right here where these push rods go in so that's when you can just pull off uh, your oil cap and see if you're getting any exhaust fumes coming out of the uh, the bottom end and what whatever uh, whatever crankcase tube or whatever and a lot of times oil uh, will present itself in all those areas too and that's how you know you have a head gasket but I just thought I'd point that out there just to make more sense so all this could be sealed and this is what I mean by internal leak if this fails here external leak is anywhere else where it's not going to blow combustion into uh, the intake or not correction into the crankcase. Hope that makes sense for you guys. All right, guys, the struggle is real for me to get this shot. I do apologize, but we're going to try our best to show you guys. And we're right on the cons compression stroke of this side. Not sure if you guys can see it or not. It's really, really hard to keep this open and get the good little mix here get another spray without spraying my camera all down nope I already did you guys hear that I already had it bubbling up you guys get you guys understand right you just spray around just to ensure that you see the air, air blowing out there, not somebody, uh, not somewhere else. The easiest way to do uh, a test to find out if it's your head gasket saves a lot of time, guys. You don't have to worry about getting out your leak down tester. And a lot of times, I use uh, a second guy when I do that, and it just yeah, it, it eats up a lot of your time. It's the proper way to do things, yes, to use a leak down tester. But if you can hear an external leak and you're questioning if it might be something else around the exhaust or something like that. Perfect example to get in there, spray your soap in there, and you'll see it bubbling out. It was hard to get that shot, guys, just because it all likes to drain off of the head real quick, but I definitely seen that it was leaking there. Let's get into tearing this head off, 
and replacing this head gasket. All right, guys, so I just want to go over what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this intake manifold. Um, we're going to pull that off. Uh, we'll just loosen these two bolts here. Um, I'm thinking I'll have to do that all the way around. Yeah, all the way around. We should be able to pull that up. Um, get that out of the way. We already got the ignition coil out of the way. We're going to pull these plugs out. I'm going to remove the valve cover. I'm just trying to uh, go over everything that, you, that you're that you going to want to do. I'm probably going to do some of this off camera, guys. Just to save time in this video, this is not going to be a full-blown tutorial. It's just going to be kind of a, a follow along on uh, how I do this head gasket on this old girl. I got this thing a top dead center on the compression stroke here. Um, you can see the valves are loose and a lot of times they just line up, they line up with this magnet here on a lot of the different engines. But refer to your service manual. A lot of these service manuals are crap compared to um, other service manuals that I've <laughs> dealt with. Um, but they tell you uh, most of what you need to know um, I'm not a big fan of some of the colder stuff that's out there. It's really frustrating, but I think they should uh, go into more depth. But that's just my personal opinion. Not that that means much. But um, before I pull it off, I'm going to go ahead and put it at top dead center. I, I just always like to do that. You really don't have to. It's just what I like to do, guys. And obviously, when we get back together here, we will do a valve adjustment. Now, I want to say a lot of these are four to six thousandths. I will uh, double check that. I always like to. I work, like I say, I work on so many different things. I just don't want to make the mistake of where you thought. So this is five thousandths right here, and I'm almost sure that this is a high hour machine, and he is at three hundred and nine hours. So he's about ready for a valve adjustment, uh, which we'll be doing anyhow when pulling the head off. He's actually not looking too bad right here. Yeah, that one's a little sloppy, but um, if you're in there, uh, you, you might as well check the valves on the other side. We're not going to do put this side head gasket for this guy. Um, but yeah, I just thought I would throw that little clip out there. This stuff right here is what really irritates me, guys. Is where they put this in there in such hard to get to location. Unbelievable. We got her. It's just why? Why? You can't get uh, anything in there. Why? But it just made this a little bit higher. Unreal. Sorry, guys. Sometimes I just gotta bring you in and show you the stresses of design flaws. Here's where we left off. I took uh, both coils off, brought them out of the way. Makes it easier to get into these inner bolts here a pain why why and then you can pull this whole intake manifold the carb and everything can remain hooked up and it'll just come right out of the way here so easy so now we'll just get down here and unhook this exhaust and guys we're going to be pulling this head off here dive into it not a bad job to do just keep track of yourself and uh even take pictures guys i know a lot of times i do that i'm you know, to, to pull out the service manual, if you don't have it, a paperback right there. A lot of times, um, just to make sure, I'll snag a few pictures right before I take off. Um, now, your service manuals, nine times out of ten, will have all the stuff you're looking for uh, in regards to that. But for me, it's just a time saver, just in case you need it and it's there. So, we remove these sneaky bolts from the exhaust. I like to use 
um, a swivel to get in there on a long extension. Works pretty good for zapping them out uh, quickly, saving a little time. So now we're going to remove these head bolts. Clip of me pulling. Be extremely careful with impacts, guys. They can ruin your day really quickly. I say not every way I do it is the right way for sure. I'll be the first to tell you that. As long as I'm getting the job done adequately and correctly, that's all that matters, guys. Okay, we're looking pretty good to zap them out. The impact. Yeah, guys, be very careful with impacts. You get to using them enough, it's a whole different ballgame. Like, yeah, you kind of know what to do. I don't want this head to drop off here. It's about to. Um, especially when you go putting these back on. I left that one in there. Head bolts are not looking too awful bad here, so that's good. I usually like to replace these, but I have reused them too. So um, I'm sure you could probably get the kits with the head gasket and bolt she's ready to come off guys back there so push rods they'll just pull right through here real easy just pull kind of pull them out here and i'm going to set them in there because i'm going to mark these and that's it it's just like that, it's that easy, guys. Boom. And right here was our leak. If you look closely, let me grab a screwdriver here, if you guys can see that or not. If you look closely, you can see where it was leaking here and right here. A lot of times these gaskets will fail over here too, guys. That's when you'll get your plugs, you'll, um, you'll burn oil, and uh, you, you'll get oil down into the crankcase. And like I said, you'll, you'll pop your uh, oil cap off and a lot of times get exhaust fumes uh, to identify a head gasket that way too. So everything looks in pretty decent shape. But like I say, we're probably going to lap these valves, relap these valves. I don't know. I might just leak check it if it does okay. And a lot of times I'll just spray right in there or take a flashlight. A lot of people like to use the flashlight method too and just see if you see any daylight through there. But uh, that's to be determined. We're going to uh, surface this head a little bit too. I like to do that and uh, get this new head gasket on. All right. I'm not 100% sure that these aren't the exact same. Um, but I mark them. I always have with doing uh, any other four stroke engine with the push rod design. So they could be the exact same. I was always told to separate them. So I'm going to get the oil residue off there. And all I'm going to do is mark an intake and exhaust on these push rods and pull them out. See, they look the exact same to me. I don't know why. I know a lot of the other engines uh, do as well. I guess the wear differences maybe is the reason they call you to do that and not mix these up. I think some even say in the service manual, but um, I, I've always marked mine and, and, go, and put them back in exactly how they came out. Yeah, guys, this thing's awesome. Um, saves me a lot of time. I just cleaned this up in about five minutes with this thing. Uh, I can remember when I used a razor blade, wire brush, and then parts cleaner and just kept going to town. And this pretty much turns this job into five minutes instead of 30 minutes. I love this thing. Um, it's a variable speed. Uh, one and two. This is from Harbor Freight, by the way. It's awesome. So it's a polisher sander. So, it's, you know, you can obviously remove that. 
But yeah, it's from Harbor Freight. This thing is so awesome. So it saves you a lot of time, guys. I just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, I've already polished up some plastics with this thing. And it does awesome with, the, with polishing too. So I'm not sure what this cost, guys. But like I say, I'll try to remember to put a link in this video. I made really quick work of that, guys. Look at that. Now I'm going to get my uh, surfacing glass out here and get this head on it and check it for warpage. I think we caught this in time, guys, so I don't think it got hot. So we probably looked out there, but we're going to uh, put a straight edge on here, check, uh, check our tolerances uh, for warpage, um, and then surface this a little bit either way. I just like doing it on all my heads when I remove them. And let me set you guys down here. Really all you got to do, I stole this out of one of my old refrigerators. Let's get a nice piece of glass and then you know it's going to be true. And then what I do a lot of times even is uh, you check it for warpage. You could just set it right on this piece of glass very carefully and see if you got any kind of rock in it. But the best way to do it is like the service manual shows you and get your straight edge on it. Get your filler gauges out and uh, and see uh, what, if, what your warp what your warpage service limits are and check them. You can often put a light behind it too and then put your straight edge on there and have a light in behind it and then you can you can straight edge it and kind of look through it too to give you a guide. All right I'm going to do this live for you guys because all the other times I've done it we'll get in there in the combustion area and uh, clean that all up last but I'm going to work on this main surface on this head first on this. I'm probably due, guys, to change that sandpaper. I'm, in fact, I know I am. Um, I don't have any water to throw on there. Eh, well, I'm one to think outside the box. I don't know about you guys. Uh, we'll throw a little WD on there. Um, I'll try and find some water. I got uh, that spray back there too I can use. I usually have a bottle of water. And then basically, uh, just take and do circles with your cylinder like this and you will guarantee yourself you're going to get a nice um, true surface here. And I know a lot of guys will take and just uh, color the whole thing. You can see high and low spots that way. Okay. All right. That there. Does a really nice job, guys. Really does. And we'll clean this again. And as you can see, I might want to hit it a little bit just because right here and right here, but uh, it will really get this thing really cleaned up and very true, guys. All right, we're going to, everything checked out. It doesn't appear to be work, uh, warp. I could have probably slammed it on how it is and it would seal up just fine, but we're going to take just a little bit off of it. A little bit more off of it. Clean this up and then we're going to start uh, working on the combustion chamber cleanup here. Oh, there we go, guys. All right, let's clean this up. All right, guys, here's a finished look. And like I said, I didn't hit the combustion area yet. But, uh, Geez, look how pretty that is. Here's where you spend a lot of your extra time at, guys, is making sure that thing, the, the surface area is 100% cleaned up and true as it can, oh, excuse me, and as true as it can get, guys. Look at that. <laughs> cleaned it right up. I got into that combustion chamber there with just a metal wire brush, and I uh, kept spraying it off. Um, uh, with the uh, brake cleaner there and it cleaned it up rather nice. Um, I know there's attachments I can get to probably even make really quick work of that, like a ball sand pad or something, but uh, that's the way I've done it for a long time. It uh, I only made eh, probably about five minutes it took me to clean that all up there, but that's looking pretty good. So the only other thing I'm going to do is um, get in this Austin uh, intake port and clean that up just a little bit for them. Um, What's what's Terrell fixes all all we say? He said we're we're not sending people to space here. Not I, I love that guy. Check out his channel. Terrell fixes all is one heck of a um, a good channel, especially for long garden uh, type equipment. Um, I've definitely uh, definitely taken a tip or two from that man. That's for sure. But uh, 
anyhow, yeah. So, you know, I mean, I would, I would go an extra mile if this was on an ATV or something, um, third pike, whatever, uh, to clean up the exhaust and intake, but we're just going to touch, touch stuff up in there and just clean up a little bit real quickly here and not get too carried away with that. All right, guys, we got our cylinder head all prepped up here and ready to go back on, um, along with our new and approved gasket. And we, uh, cleaned up that cylinder really well, cleaned up the surfaces. I'm going to give it one more quick wipe down. Um, and then we're going to slam this on here. I'm going to drop a page all, out of the service manual for this engine with all the specifications uh, in regarding to the torque and valve clearances. All right. So let's pull our new gasket out of here. It's definitely a little beefed up from the OEM one. You guys will look at that real quick. And that was, even has a part domer right there. You guys can see that or not. All right. Let's get this thing reassembled. All right, guys. We've got our push rods uh, set into place here. Um, just remember where you marked them at. I always mark mine. Obviously, this side being the outer side. And then just put an intake and exhaust identifier on there. And you'll be uh, sure not to mix them up. I want to just double checking myself here. All right, let's throw this head on. All right, guys, I'm going to quickly uh, clean out the threads on these uh, cylinder bolts we're going to reuse. That's what I do every time. And just hit them with some brake clean. And uh, get those threads cleaned up really well. All right, guys, I didn't see this in the service manual, but I like to do this too. Light coat of uh, oil on my head studs. So I just wanted to show that they do send some pretty handy instructions um, with this head, head gasket kit. So you got the, your service limits on your warpage, three thousandths. So that's cool they send that and you don't have to dig out your service manual and then your, your uh, I think a two stage torque sequence here and uh, everything on the back here as far as torque uh, specifications. So that's cool. Just thought I'd throw that in there. All right, so we are supposed to install this with the part number up. It does say that. I'm going to try to mount this uh, cylinder up real quick, guys. Here's the torque sequences. Pretty easy. We didn't hit the first stage. I stopped at 15 foot pounds. Um, I just converted uh, the 370 inch pounds to foot pounds. Uh, I just like to do that. Don't ask me why, but it comes out to 30.8 uh, foot pounds. So I just did 15 on the first torque sequence, and then I'm going to do like 32 ish on the second because that comes out to be 30.8. So 31, 32 foot pounds should be just about right. All right, guys, just be a little careful um, when you put in, inserting these push rods. You'll see the tiny, I don't know if you can see that too well, but you'll see tiny little holes for the push rod to go into. If you look right there, you'll see a tiny little hole. And then they just fit into these slots here. I need to put that one back in. And then lube everything up, guys. I like to lube up the top of the valves, the push rods, both sides. Um, obviously, if you're putting it on the top of the push rods, it should be on the lifter um, as well. So again, I can't stress this enough. I've said it multiple times. Check your service manual, how it tells you to adjust these valves. I just thought, you know, I'd show you how I like to do it. Um, a lot of times you want to take these locking bolts out first. Um, and, and then you make your valve adjustment on these bigger uh, 13 millimeters. Um, but what I like to do is kind of just crack these open first. 
versus uh, putting all that strength um, on that inner locking bolt. And uh, it's just the way I've always done it, guys. But again, I'm not saying this is the right right way to do things. So make sure you um, make sure you refer to your service manual in doing so. I just wanted to show you what works for me. So it could be four to six thousandths. So we're going to set it right in the middle um, at five thousandths on the intake and the exhaust. All right, guys, we're going to button this up. We got our valves adjusted. Um, we're going to throw our new uh, rings on the intake side here. It comes with your kit. And we're going to get this valve cover back on here and tidy this up. All right, guys, so get your business card. Get your coil, ignition coil, mount it back up. Now, I like to use um, a little bit of blue Loctite. You don't have to. It's probably overkill, guys. But I just like to ensure that they uh, won't back out and damage your flywheel or ignition coil. And they ha I have seen them come loose, guys, so <clears throat> it, it can happen. So I just use a little bit, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. I just like to usually choke up. And on these, just to get to where it just about almost forces you to stop, then you're good. So real easy, guys. We're going to repeat the process on the other side and take one of my customers' handy business card out of here. Sorry, Chuck. <laughs> he gave me a few. So we're going to head over here and do and repeat. It'll be basically the same process, guys. All right, after you get the gap set on those ignition coils, I like to rotate the engine a few times. Just make sure everything was set right. Guys, we're about ready to put the plugs in this thing and let her, let her rip. Uh, put the filter on here, put the plugs on, and uh, fire this thing up. i um, going to check the oil here real quick, make sure everything's looking good, and we're going to get prepped for a first start, guys. All right, guys. Well, this buttons up the head gasket job for the Kohler. It's actually uh, went pretty smooth. We did have a little bit of carb issues. We slammed a brand new carb in there. Didn't even fool around with the old one. I don't have Welch plugs. It really didn't look too bad, but I just slammed a new carb, aftermarket carb on there. I've ran these before, purse like a kitten, no leaks. So I hope this helps anybody that runs across a head gasket failure on their lawn tractor. It should be about the same across the board, guys. I mean, for the most part, even like this engine back here, the 17.5 Briggs, real easy job, guys. Get in there. If you're hearing that external leak, that get in there and fix it ahead of time, guys, because the problem's only going to get worse. It's probably going to heat up, and it's going to do further damage to your engine. Get in there and get it done. If you have an internal leak, obviously, you're going to show it on the spark plugs a lot of times, and you're going to get exhaust combustion into the crankcase and your crankcase lines will show oil a lot of times and even up into the air filter and such. So yeah, I hope this helps anybody. And thanks for watching Digging Deep. Smash that like button, give me a subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Let's fire this thing up real quick for you guys here.